Now, as we get into section 10.2, we're no longer looking at sequences, but we're looking at an infinite series. And an infinite series is just the sum of an infinite sequence. We say that the sum of the first n terms is called the nth partial sum. So if we have a sequence of numbers, to get the corresponding series, you just add up the terms of the sequence. Like I said before, we talk about partial sums. So the first partial sum is just the first term of the sequence. The second partial sum is the sum of the first two terms of the sequence down to the nth partial sum, which is the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. And it's often written in this sigma summation notation here. When we are looking at the limit of a series, we're looking at the limit of the nth partial sum. Just like with sequences, some series are going to converge to a real number limit and others are going to diverge. And I've got a picture here and it says um, at the bottom, the sum of a series with positive terms can be interpreted as a total area of an infinite collection of rectangles. So you can see on the left here, this picture, a sub n is 2 over n squared. So you've got a sub 1, a sub 2, and on down. And you can see very quickly, these rectangles are getting very, very, very small. Their areas are approaching zero very quickly. This series has a limit. The second one here, even though the rectangles are getting smaller, there is no limit to this series that's defined as 1 plus 1 over n. So the total area of these rectangles, if you were to add them all up, it would go to infinity. It goes very slowly to infinity, but it does go to infinity. So we're not looking at the limit of a particular term anymore, but we're looking at the limit of a sum of terms. That's the main difference between a sequence and a series for right now. Now, a very specific type of series is a geometric series. And geometric series are in this form here. We have a plus a times r to the first plus a times r to the second, and so on and so on. In the summation notation, it's from n equals 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1 power. It can also be written starting um, at 0, a times r to the nth power. If you have a geometric series and the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the geometric series converges and it converges to a over 1 minus r. We will use this quite often. However, though, if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, the series will diverge. It's the sum there is eventually going to go to infinity. So I'm going to do one example here for this video. It says, determine if the geometric series converges or diverges. If it converges, find its sum. So if you look here at the top, we have a plus a times r plus a times r to the second. Here I've got 1 eighth plus 1 eighth squared plus 1 eighth cubed. You could think of this, there we go, um, as the a value being 1 eighth. And then the r value is also going to be a 1 eighth. So this would be 1 eighth plus 1 eighth times 1 eighth to the first power plus 1 eighth times 1 eighth squared and so on. So I could write this in the sigma notation. This n starts at 1 and goes to infinity of 1 eighth times 1 eighth to the n minus 1 power. So there we have a geometric series. The r value is 1 eighth. That's certainly less than 1. So this is going to converge, and it's going to converge to this value here, 
a over 1 minus r. The a value is 1 eighth. Let me write that it converges. So it's going to be 1 eighth over 1 minus 1 eighth. So that's 1 eighth over 7 eighths or 1 seventh. So it converges to the value 1 seventh.